your hometown station real estate and financial guides are back on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS, to share with you what you need to know in order to navigate the sometimes confusing markets and guide you toward financial wellness. Reach out to them for advice at 855-DON-GINO. And now back to your hosts, Don Getling and Gino Franti. Well, we can honestly say without a doubt that we love this two hours of our week every week. A um, couple reasons. One, because we get the opportunity to help you because of our knowledge, our experience, and the experience from the incredible professionals we bring on. And we always learn something. I mean, seriously, I hope you've been listening to the show. And if you miss part of it, the good news is you go to hometownstation.com. The podcast will literally be done uh, right after our show. Not too long after the show, there will be a podcast there. Or you can go to Don and Gino. Dot com. You can click on uh, the Listen Chat Live. The show will be there. Um, and you'll get some great insight from Jim Reap with Reap Rickett Law Firm. I mean, we're talking a 30-year veteran explaining how to save 200 to 400 to a million dollars by going down the wrong path that can be avoided by settling disputes amicably using a very experienced uh, mediator. And that's what's really nice is we have an attorney here saying, avoid the courts. They're overcrowded and they're expensive. Uh, absolutely. And, and unpredictable. I mean, you have oh, to yeah. understand that when you go to court and you try your case and you submit it to a judge with respect to family law or jury, with respect to civil matters or criminal matters, you no longer have the ball. Oh, that's it's scary. not your choice it's not your decision something happens to you it happens to you right absolutely wow so you're not involved in, yeah you're not involved in that decision process anymore you've given up your right true to scary choose. scary particularly when you're talking about your kids absolutely oh, my goodness. yeah and that's where the emotional side comes back into play we were talking about earlier um, the cost the true cost of going to court uh, we even ha we had a question uh, and if you want Jump in our chat line. It's going crazy. Yeah, it's hopping <laughs> pretty good in there. Um, and what a, a great question uh, for Jim. Uh, someone was asking, do you have to have an attorney to go to court? A a absolutely not. And in response to, you know, the, the fact that it is so expensive to be represented in an area like family law, and in response to the court's understanding that dealing with families is a significant state interest, the courts have developed and have resources for a facilitator's office, somebody to help you with paperwork, a self-help center staffed again with people to help you with the paperwork. And it's not uncommon because of the costs involved with a litigated case that if I'm meeting with somebody, one of the first things that I'm trying to do is make a determination if that type of free resource that is available to them um, is the appropriate way for them to go to have their dispute brought up and and um, resolved by by the court so it, it takes it takes a few things number one is you know if you, if you don't have the money to litigate or you don't have the money to pursue a, some type of alternative dispute resolution um, which would include mediation with un, under that banner and under that cloak but also I have to qualify them. Do they have the personality to be able to do this? Are, are they detached enough from the emotions where they can try their own case and not just go into the court and, and, and whine or cry or complain? Can they actually get their point across? So it takes a certain um, personality, a certain intellect, a certain uh, resignation to the process of what's happening for the for the person to be able to stand up in court, and I've had many instances. I, I earlier in my career, I'd, I'd represent a, a number of attorneys, and I found that I was representing them through the more difficult part of their case. And as that phase reached resolution, I would look at the attorney group. Um, they're still making good money; they could afford an attorney, but they also had you know, uh, some experience in the courtroom themselves. And as soon as the more sensitive or the more difficult part of the case would be resolved, I'd suggest to them, go it on your own at this point. You know, if you get, if you get in a bad place again, come on back. Okay, I see. 
but you know. Um, so you gave them guidance to where they can kind of take the ball from there potentially. Oh yeah, when, uh, you know, it basically look for it. You know, any type of dispute resolution or something like that has to do with what what I call like smooth sailing. So when the winds are calm and the seas are calm, mm -hmm. is you know you can you can do this. I love your candor. It's fun listening to you, Jim, because if you know, for me, going to an attorney that's going to represent me in a very expensive, time-consuming, emotional um, event in my life, I want to talk to somebody like you that's going to help because you talk so calmly, so confidently, and you can tell your experiences is there and would make me confident and bring down my emotion emotional level and feel very confident as much as I can <laughs> going into an uh, event that well, I don't have. It's the peaceful warrior. You haven't seen the office side of me, which is, you know, like vetting the clients. So uh, you haven't seen a cross-examination other than my cross-examination of my clients. Well, that's why I want you on my side, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's, that, that's yet to be seen. <laughs> uh, I hope not. We were just talking about the, you know, the true cost of, you know, handling disputes and having to go to court and everything, how it can cost you you know years and it costs you tons of money and I love what Dilza on our chat room just said well 200 to a million dollars to handle a case it is true it's cheaper to keep her <laughs> <laughs> well real quick we barely grazed this but we have a few minutes left I'd like to talk about the process so sure. there, there's a, a dispute. mediation yeah there's a dispute you have a problem one person's upset they call your office what's the next step well, I mean, there's many approaches to mediation because mediation can take place at any phase in, in a case. So there's cases that start as a mediation. And in that type of process, the couple will typically come to visit me. If one party comes, then it may be more difficult to have them both come because I really, you know, as, as a mediator, I'm, I'm, I'm a neutral. So I have to be able to assure both of them that I'm not taking sides, that I will be as brutal with their spouse as I am with them, um, and you know, help them through the process. So typically the couple will come in together and we'll talk about what's, what's involved. And it, it's really just paperwork because only the court can really process a divorce. And the next is really your financial disclosures. California family law is different than any other form of civil litigation in, um, in, in California. We basically, lawyers would refer to it as we have a reverse discovery process. So like if you're being sued for um, a, a real estate deal, typically the advice that you're given by your attorney is you say nothing unless it's specifically asked for. If they ask the question, then you're obligated to give a, a, an accurate answer. Within California family law, you're obligated by a fiduciary duty to disclose all material facts and information relative to your assets, debts, and income flow. And if you don't, well, you know, the court does have a way of punishing you for that. Ouch. Yeah. So as they, as they go through the disclosure, then they're ready to sit down in the, in the mediation process. And I can look through the disclosures and um, help the people sometimes go, you know, item by item relative to a sensible division of their assets, which, you know, will look for an equal division of the community, but it doesn't have to settle for an equal division of the community. I had a case where the guy wanted his clothes and a Buick. That's it. He wanted his wife to have their house, their rental real estate, the retirement plans, their savings, all of their possessions. And it was a hard one for me to swallow and to endorse. <laughs> but after uh, you know speaking quite a bit and understanding why the man felt that way, they signed the deal. Wow. wow. Well, that's good information. If you just tuned in, uh, what a great show today with Jim Reap with Reap Rickett, a uh, law firm, partner up with a very, very uh, educated and informed as well, Mr. David Rickett. You guys are doing great work for a lot of great people, and we appreciate you being part of the show today. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's good to know that I didn't crack the top 100, but I'm, I'm in the second 100. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again for being part of our show. We look forward to having you back. Absolutely. And joining us. And uh, again, we're going to be on for another hour with uh, another exciting guest, another sh radio show host and top real estate agent in the country. When we come back to the Don and Gino Real Estate and Finance Show on your hometown station, you have 20 KHGS.